Typhoon Kadoon has reached the Korean Peninsula, with the South Coast already being affected. The entire nation will be under its influence by tonight. The country is bracing for the typhoon, with thousands evacuated nationwide and air and train services suspended. Some schools will have shorter days, with some even completely cancelling classes. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has called for the beefing up of war preparations in an offensive manner while presiding over a key military meeting. We begin with Typhoon Kanun. It's officially touched down here on the peninsula this morning and is expected to travel right through the country. Let's connect with our Song Yujin for the latest. Now, Yujin, tell us where you're standing by at the moment. Tommy, so right now I'm in the east coast of the country in Samcheok City in Gangwon-do province. Right, things are looking quite brutal over there. How is the situation looking? You're right, Tommy. So this region has been receiving late rainfall since last night. And as we moved into the morning, as you can see, rain is pouring down heavily. The winds have gotten stronger. And so with this relentless rain, as you can see, there's really no point in wearing a raincoat or carrying an umbrella. That's because this part of the country, the eastern part of the Gangwon-do province, is expected to receive around 60 to 100 millimeters of rain per hour today and a total of 600 millimeters until Friday, which is the heaviest rain forecast in the country. And so while our team are, was on the road, I could feel that our van was shaking because of the heavy rain and strong winds. And also I could see street lights and trees wobbling because of the gusts as well. So strong winds up to 35 meters per a second is expected to hit this region, which is strong enough to bring down trees and also derail trains. Now, to talk about the Typhoon Kanun in general, the Korea Meteorological Administration forecasted earlier today that Typhoon Kanun would make landfall on the country's southern coast at around 9 a.m. It's about two minutes past nine. There haven't been any updates from the weather agency on whether it has made landfall, but I'll bring you the updates in our later newscast. So once a typhoon reaches the peninsula, it will move upwards, cutting its way through the country. So the entire nation is expected to be under the typhoon's influence by tonight. Eugene, I can definitely see that the typhoon is making its presence really felt. Now, tell us about what safety measures are in place at the moment. So typhoon alerts have been issued nationwide as of 7.30 a.m. today, and the country is especially on high alert as we're expecting heavier rain and stronger winds after the typhoon makes its landfall, especially after last year's typhoon Hindemnor resulted in the loss of 11 lives. So thankfully, according to the data from the Interior Ministry, the latest one, as of 6 a.m. today, no casualties have been reported yet from the typhoon. But for safety, more than 10,300 people nationwide have have evacuated from their homes for safety. More than 330 flights nationwide have been canceled for the day. And it's not just the skies that are being affected by the typhoon. Dozens of sea routes, roads, and hundreds of hiking trails have been closed off since yesterday. And with safety really as a top utmost priority, the government has advised companies to adjust working hours as well as kindergartens and schools in affected areas to take precautionary measures, closing down for the day, shortening school hours, or switching to online classes. And the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters during its meeting today really stressed people living in landslide or flood-prone areas to watch out and evacuate immediately in case of emergency. That's all I have for now. Back to you, Tommy. Thank you, Eugene, so much for that report. Please do stay safe there. Now, where is this typhoon now and where is it headed? Let's head over to our weather center now with our Lee ji -hyun. Good morning. Typhoon Kanun just made landfall in Tongyang, a port city on the southern coast of South Korea, and will continue to move northwards, passing Cheongju in Chungcheong, Pukdo province this afternoon. It will then arrive in Seoul tonight before it continues to travel through North Korea tomorrow at dawn. The whole country needs to brace for a severe tropical storm all day. Typhoon alerts are in place 
nationwide. Right now, heavy rain is pounding the southeast coast and rain will pick up as the day goes on. East of Kaunda province is forecast to see 100 millimeters an hour of torrential rains with up to 500 millimeters in the forecast and there will be damaging winds along with downpours today. That's all for now. I will be back with more at the end of newscast. Let's talk more about this Typhoon Canoe. Now, this one is a particular in terms of its speed, direction, and its expected path as well. For more, we're joined by Professor Yi hyun -ho this morning. Thanks for joining us. Hi. First of all, walk us through the expected course of this typhoon. Now, it's apparently going straight up to, through the entire peninsula, something that is quite rare. Now, Professor, why is that? Uh the typhoons going straight up are not so special as they occur about two or th three times a year. However, it is special in that this is almost for the first time that such a typhoon has penetrated the, the Korean Peninsula. The movement of the typhoon uh, usually occurs when the North Pacific high pressure system is strongly established in the east of the peninsula, so it blocks the eastward movement of the uh, typhoons. Currently, the typhoon is moving up uh, in this way because the edge of the North Pacific high pressure system is uh, almost near the Korean Peninsula. Sure, the movement itself is not rare, but the fact that we're having it for the first time is quite unprecedented. Then the question is, how strong is this typhoon? I mean, what kind of damage is it capable of? Uh, currently, the maximum wind speed of the typhoon is about uh, 30 meters per second. Uh, wind of this magnitude will mainly occur along the coastal, line, air, uh, coastal areas. Uh, when the wind blows at uh, 30 meters per second, I think that uh, it is uh, difficult for even others to stand. Uh, near the center of the typhoons, a uh, heavy precipitation of greater than 50 or 60 millimeters per hour will fall. Uh, when it rains at even 30, meter, 30 millimeters per hour, I think that it is usually so that the car wipers or umbrellas are not almost useless. Right, maybe a raincoat would be a better idea since we don't have to carry it around. Yeah, I agree. Then I hear this typhoon is also different from others that we've had in the past, that it's moving quite slowly. I mean, why, why is this concerning if it moves slowly? Uh, actually, the, when the typhoon uh, changes its direction rapidly, uh, the typhoon tends to move very slowly. Uh, this typhoon canoe uh, changed, have changed uh, its direction very rapidly two times, so it moves slowly. Uh, it moves slowly, but uh, it now it moves about uh, 25 kilometers per hour uh, and moving heading up north. So I think it, it's very typical. Uh, simply, the slower the typhoon moves, the more time it takes to be damaged by the typhoon, so it is very uh, dangerous. Since the straight line distance uh, from the southern coast to the south is uh, about 300, kilo 300 kilometers, so it will take about uh, 12 hours for the center of the typhoon to pass through the Korean Peninsula. Wow, 12 hours total. Now, after passing through the uh, greater Seoul area tonight, is the typhoon expected to go up to North Korea this weekend? Then, I mean, how likely is it that the storm will actually die out in the middle? Yes, uh, the typhoon is expected to reach Shinjuku tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. So, however, as the typhoon passes over the land, its strength will be much, much weaker than it is now. So, I think that the typhoon will be weakened and become a low pressure system uh, before reaching Shinjuku. I see. So, it will reach North Korea by tomorrow night. Then. Before we let you go, will Typhoon Canoe be the last storm we'll have this summer, or is it difficult to predict? I'm sure that uh, it is almost impossible to predict a specific typhoon activity in a year. Mm -hmm. However, uh, this is the year with a high uh, possibility of stronger typhoons than usual due to the influence of El Niño, El Niño and Southern Ocean Glacier System. Right, hopefully Canoon will be the one last storm we'll have this summer. Thanks so much for your insight to this morning, Professor Yihano. We appreciate it. Thank you. 
And ensuring the safety of the World Cup Jamboree participants remains one of top priorities during this typhoon. All events and activities will take place indoors for the day. Our Yi Shi Hu tells us more. The Ministry of the Interior and Safety is strengthening preventative measures to ensure the safety of participants in the 25th World Scout Jamboree as Typhoon Kanun approaches the Korean Peninsula. This was according to Interior Minister Lee Sang-min at a press briefing in Seoul on Wednesday. The ministry is scaling up preventive patrols to spot potential hazards such as flooding, landslides and rock balls near accommodation sites for participants that are spread around the country. It is doing this by cooperating with regional administrations and the police and fire agencies. If the accommodation is likely to be directly impacted by the typhoon, the government will share real-time disaster information with the World Organization of Scout Movement. We'll also inform the Scout members of the weather situation and give them emergency instructions, and do our best to make sure they stay safe from the typhoon. This comes as all scouts had left the Semangum campsite by Tuesday evening and were placed in accommodation in different locations around the country. Since Wednesday morning, the scouts have been engaging in activities prepared by regional administrations. The activities include watching and taking part in a dance performance by the Han River, a visit to Hwasong Fortress, a World Heritage Site in Gyeonggi-do Province, and playing Korean traditional farm music or Pungmulnori in Jeollabuk-do Province. As for Thursday, however, they will only engage in indoor activities due to the typhoon. Meanwhile, the government has deployed 130 officials to provide safety and medical support at the accommodation sites and 180 to offer translation services. The police and fire agencies are also on standby to ensure maximum safety during activities. Yi si Hu, Arirang News. And here we have a group of young Spanish scout members who have now resettled themselves in Paju City. Leaving bittersweet moments at Semangem, they're now enjoying themselves with new adventures in Paju. Our Choi Soo Hyung has their story. The 25th Semangem Royal Scout Jamboree has entered a new phase. Following their early departure from the Semangem campsite on Tuesday, scouts have been enjoying experiences all over the country. On Wednesday, a team of 123 people from Spain visited the National Folk Museum of Korea in Paju, Gyeonggi-do province, as part of their revised Jamboree program. Most of the Spanish scouts mentioned that, although they were quite tired, taking part in various activities was better than simply staying in hotels and doing nothing. I'm sad because I can't um, go with other countries, and that was the point of the Jamboree. But, you know, we're happy because we're doing other activities. Here is just one choice. But it's okay. It's so nice that they could uh, give us the choice to still doing activities and not just stay in the hotels doing nothing. One of the team members mentioned that a small night concert with other countries during the first week was his most memorable moment. I think that the first week uh, it was a nice experience. My favorite experience was at night that they make like a little concert and we go with uh, people of other parts of the world and we start like dancing different songs. We, call, we call, could ask the DJ to play different songs and we learn like other culture songs. Despite the long journey to their new accommodation from the Semangam campsite, they express their gratitude to Korea for its hospitality. I really like seeing the big signs with the Korean letters in the streets, like uh, on the buildings and stuff. I didn't expect them to be that nice, but you're all really nice people. You're, you're always there to help us, so I had a good time at Seoul. The team later said that while it's true the Semangam campsite was hot and many issues arose all at once, they viewed the Jamboree from a different perspective. Everything that I saw like in the press was very different uh, as what I was seeing inside. People got used to it, uh, we were doing the normal activities and everything. When we spoke with other leaders inside the Jamboree, they also had different realities and they also didn't experience as much, as many problems as we were seeing. Uh, in newspapers or in TV. The scouts will continue their experiences nationwide until the end of the Jamboree on Saturday.
최수형 아리랑 뉴스 파주. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has called for a ramped-up effort for war preparations in an apparent move to keep things rocky here on the peninsula ahead of South Korea-U.S. joint military drills later this month. Lee Seung-jae reports. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has called on his regime to prepare for a possible war in an offensive manner. According to North Korea's Korean Central News Agency on Thursday, the statement was made at an enlarged meeting of the Central Military Commission of the Ruling Workers' Party of Korea on Wednesday. During the meeting, Kim stressed the importance of a strong army to carry out the party's Central Committee's military strategy, while also calling on the regime to secure more powerful strike means for carrying out the mission of war deterrence and intensifying the work for deploying them in the units for action in a mobile way. During the meeting, Kim also replaced his top general, Park Suil, with Lee young il who was previously appointed as a vice chairman of the Central Military Commission in January 2023. The KCNA also mentioned other items discussed at the meeting. They include talks on a military parade on September 9th to mark the regime's 75th founding anniversary, also known as the Day of the Foundation of the Republic. It could also mark an opportunity for Kim Jong-un to showcase the North's military weapons amid the growing tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Wednesday's meeting came as South Korea and the United States plan to hold their annual Urchi Freedom Shield exercise later this month. Lee seung -jae, Arirang News. 74 countries, including South Korea, denounced North Korea's continued development of ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons and urged them to abide by their international obligations. During the first session of the Preparatory Committee for the 2026 Review Conference of the Parties to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons on Wednesday in Vienna, a statement was issued saying that since 2022, North Korea has been launching ballistic missiles and developing its nuclear program with unprecedented frequency and in a manner that violates a number of UN Security Council resolutions. North Korea was also condemned for threatening the safety and sovereignty of neighboring countries through illegal ballistic missile launches and provocative actions that undermine international peace and security. Good morning, I'm Matthew Ashley, and we now turn over to stories from around the world. We begin in Hawaii, where at least six people died in wildfires on the island on Maui on Wednesday. The death toll is expected to rise as search and rescue operations continue. According to officials, hundreds of people lost their homes and thousands more have been forced to evacuate as fires raged on Maui and neighboring Big Island. The U.S. Coast Guard also rescued 12 people who jumped into the sea to avoid flames that destroyed much of the town of Lehana. Thousands in Hawaii are without power and mobile phone service due to infrastructure damage. The cause of the wildfires is still unknown, but they broke out amid prolonged dry conditions and were fanned by winds from Hurricane Dora. Now, in Russia, at least one person has been killed and at least 60 wounded on Wednesday in a massive blast at a Russian military optics plant less than 80 kilometers from Moscow. Rescue teams are searching through the rubble over concerns some may still be trapped. The explosion at the Zagorsk optical and me mechanical plant reportedly originated from a pyrotechnics warehouse on the site that was rented by a third company. The plant is responsible for manufacturing optical devices such as night vision equipment and binoculars for the Russian military. The cause of the explosion is still unclear and a criminal investigation has been opened. Now, coup leaders in Niger on Wednesday accused France of breaching a ban on its airspace put in place on Sunday. The regime claims that a French aircraft took off from neighboring Chad and then crossed over in Tunisia. It then allegedly cut off all contact with local air traffic control. 
The military takeover leaders also accused France of freeing 16 captured extremists who allegedly planned to attack Nigerian military positions along its border. France has rejected both accusations. It said that the flight was authorized by and coordinated with Niger's armed forces and that no extremists have been freed. France has 1,500 troops in the country to combat extremists. And finally, representatives from eight Amazon countries, including Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia and Ecuador, wrapped up a two-day Amazon summit in the Brazilian city of Belém on Tuesday. It was the first such summit of the Amazon Cooperation Treaty Organization in 14 years. Now, despite agreeing on a list of unified environmental measures to bolster regional cooperation, they failed to reach a consensus on a deforestation pact proposed by Brazilian President Lula da Silva. He had sought to end deforestation by 2030. Instead, the summit concluded with a promised alliance to fight forest destruction, but that members would be free to tackle deforestation goals individually. Climate activists have said the deal falls short at a time when the world is seeing record temperatures. Good morning. As Typhoon Kanun just made a landfall in Tongyang, a port city on the southern coast of South Korea, nearby areas are feeling its force the most at this hour, and the typhoon will continue to move northwards and will arrive in the capital area tonight. Rain is pounding down on the southeast coast, and rain will pick up as the day goes on. East of Gangwon-do province is forecast to see 100 millimeters an hour of torrential rains, with up to 500 millimeters in the forecast. Winds will grow stronger as well, blowing at between 15 and 35 meters per second across the Korean peninsula all day. The south coast will see stronger winds, strong enough to down trees and cause power outages. Please stay safe. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. We thank you for watching New Day at Arirang. We'll keep you updated on Typhoon Canoon throughout the day. Stay safe wherever you are.